I can tell you right now, the probability of encountering multiple probability problems on the SAT is high. It's my job to increase the likelihood that you'll ace these questions. Statistically speaking, if you stay engaged in this lesson and do some practice problems after, your probability for SAT success just goes up. Simple as that. So let's get to it. In this lesson, we'll go over the general formula for probability, possible values for probability, and how to solve for the probability of multiple events occurring. First, let's look at the definition. Probability is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total possible outcomes. This definition also works as a formula. The formula for finding probability is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of total possible outcomes. Let's see how the probability formula works with a quick example. There are six sides on this die. If we roll the die one time, there are six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. If we wanted to know the probability of rolling a five, we could consult our probability formula and find that our number of total possible outcomes is six. And since we want to find the probability of only rolling a five, the number of favorable outcomes is one. So our probability is one over six. Not all probability problems need to be solved by calculating the total number of outcomes. Some problems can be solved by using your knowledge of the rules of probability. Let's take a look. Probabilities are always values between zero and one, and the sum of all probabilities equals one. One means an event is guaranteed to happen, and zero means an event is absolutely, positively not going to happen. Not in a million years, not in a billion years, not ever. Now, let's run through a sample SAT problem where these rules will come into play. The probability of randomly selecting a green marble from a jar containing green, red, and blue marbles is 2 over 9. What is the probability of randomly selecting a red or blue marble from the jar? Our answer choices are 1 third, 4 ninths, 2 thirds, and 7 ninths. Let's start by underlining the facts, circling the key terms, and labeling the answer choices, which are possible values for selecting a red or blue marble. We're looking for the probability of choosing a red or blue marble out of a selection of red, blue, and green marbles. As we know, the sum of all probabilities must add up to one. So, we want to set the probability of choosing a green marble plus the probability of choosing a red marble, plus the probability of choosing a blue marble equal to one. We're told that the probability of choosing a green marble is two ninths. So our equation becomes two ninths plus the probability of choosing a red marble, plus the probability of choosing a blue marble equals one. We can isolate the variables by subtracting two ninths from each side which means that the probability of choosing a red marble plus the probability of choosing a blue marble is 7 ninths. And since we don't care whether we choose a red marble or a blue one, our probability of choosing a red or blue marble also equals 7 ninths. Looking at our answer choices, this matches answer choice D, which is 7 ninths. The two rules of probability definitely made solving this problem much easier. Now, let's apply this formula to a real test question. This time, we'll make it a pause and solve, so you can work the problem out on your own before we go through it together. A set of integers contains all integers greater than 1 and less than 15. If an integer is randomly selected from this set, what is the probability it is smaller than 5? Ready, set, pause. Okay, how was that? Let's go through the problem together and see if we get the same answer. So we're being asked for the probability of selecting an integer less than five, which is great since we just learned the formula for probability. We'll underline the facts, 
circle the key terms, and label the answer choices, which are possible probabilities. The possible outcomes in this problem are the integers greater than 1 and less than 15, which means that 15 and 1 aren't options. We're left with 13 numbers to choose from. So our equation becomes probability equals number of favorable outcomes over 13. Now we need to find how many of these numbers will match the requirement that the number chosen is smaller than 5. 2, 3, and 4 work, but not 5, since we're looking for numbers less than 5. That's three favorable outcomes. Our equation is now probability equals 3 over 13. Looking at the answer choices, B is 3 over 13. That's our answer. Circle and celebrate. We were able to solve this problem quickly and correctly using our formula for probability. This is a helpful skill for other types of problems, too. If the question asks for the probability of two events occurring together, you'll want to plug the values into a new equation. The probability of both events occurring is equal to the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. You'll use this equation when you're given a probability question with the word and, which means that we want two events to happen together. For example, if the probability of rain is 0.2 and the probability of hail is 0.1, the probability that it will both rain and hail is equal to 0.2 multiplied by 0.1. So the probability that it will both rain and hail is equal to 0 0.02. There's one more type of probability problem on the SAT and it asks for the probability that one of two events will occur. We can solve for this by adding the probabilities of each happening. So the probability that either event will occur is equal to the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event. If we want to find the probability of either rain or hail from our rain example, we already know our individual probabilities so we would set the probability of either event equally happening to 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1. Doing the math, we get that the probability of either event occurring is equal to 0 0.3. These straightforward equations and the rules of probability will help you strategically solve various probability problems. Keep practicing, and the probability that you'll be able to take on the SAT will significantly increase.